Kendra, and welcome to Hook by Happenstance Makes Monday, episode number 16, Sweeping. So now, let's discuss why sweeping encompasses my week. According to dictionary.com, sweeping is an adjective meaning of wide range or scope, moving or passing about over a wide area, moving, driving, or passing steadily and forcibly on, also, of the outcome of a contest, decisive, overwhelming, or complete. It's like to sweep a game. Sweeping. And these all pertain to the scope of my projects this week. My scope was broad, and I think it, it encompassed a lot of different things, and it was kind of in keeping with the standard idea of sweeping, In it was a cleaning up of sorts. Trying to clean up some things that I had in progress, clean up some things that I like messes I had made for myself out of Freaker Frogs and things of that nature, and um, just trying to kind of get myself back to a good starting point. I obviously passed over a wide area. I have a number of finished objects, though I didn't do most of the, well, I did a decent amount of stitching this week. We'll get to that. And moving, driving, or passing steadily and forcibly on. There were several times where I was like, oh, so over this, ready to cast some, or like, what do you call it when you start crocheting something? I think of it as casting on, but I understand that it technically is not. Hooking on, chaining on, starting a new project. I, I had to hold myself back, restrain myself from starting some new things. I did start one, start and finish one new thing. But I had to hold myself back because there's a bunch of things up here that want to be out here. And um, lastly, I found this interesting in the word origins for the term sweeping. It was first recorded between 1470 and 1480, but it is believed to have come from some English terms that sound a lot like sweeping, like sweepin or sweepin. Anyways, they are words that it makes sense how in the evolution of the word they would get to where we are now. But the part I found interesting is it is believed to be sweeping, the past tense of the English term, which is no longer used, swope. Like, doesn't it seem like swope should be the past turn of sweep? But rather, swope was the, um, like, present tense, and sweeping would be the past. I just think that's funny. So moving along to what came off my hook this week. Let's start with the little things, because I do have a pile of them. The things that did not involve a whole lot of actual, like, stitching. This is a coaster, I don't know, small dishcloth. I kind of like to have larger coasters. They're almost dishclothy size, but smaller, and I leave them on my desk. And that way, when I put my coffee cup on my desk, my spill zone is covered. It also helps me to not scooch things right up against my cup. Because it's like, okay, you're, you're in the, this is the cup's personal space. Don't enter the cup's personal space. They're a little rainbow. But this is actually a pattern that I had made. Again, I'm going through and taking care of loose ends about a lot of projects I had been making when I was doing design work for somebody else. This is one of those projects. It basically just needed ends woven in and clipped. That was all that was keeping this from being done. So it is now a completed rainbow coaster. The next thing are these two um, cozies and they fit, we have some stainless steel mugs and the mug will just sit right here, it has a little handle, this will go around and I just needed to put buttons and weave in the ends. This yarn however is significant because at Christmas we, every year I make all of me and my husband and our kids, I make us all matching pajama pants and then I do something fun for like our shirts. Like one year I made, I bought um, like sweatshirts and then using Wonder Under and matching fabric from the pants, I cut it out and I put our initials on the front so I had like a giant K on my chest. It's pretty fun. I still have the sweatshirt. I wear it during the winter time, like to bed, not in public. <laughs> Anyways, I um, last year made tie-dye shirts. So I bought everybody white shirts. I got a tie-dye kit, which actually the plastic container from is what I hold my stash blanket in. So it was kind of like I got a, I bought a container and got tie-dye for free because I bought it on clearance at Joann's. But anyways, that is neither here nor there. Tie-dye shirts, leftover tie-dye dye, and some white cotton yarn became this, uh, these cozies. I had done tie-dye for my son's birthday last year in June. 
June of 20, what would that be, 2016? Yes, 2016 in June, we'd done tie-dye shirts for his birthday and enjoyed it so much that we did it again for Christmas. Well, with his birthday, I let the kids help me dye yarn after with the leftover tie-dye, and I made theirs into um, toys for them, into octop octopuses and an egg. But at Christmas, I didn't have a whole lot of extra dye, so I just went ahead and did it by myself. But I did make some cozies to go on these stainless steel mugs that we got for Christmas. So those are done. They have buttons. They're woven in. And now they can go to where they live till we use them. Also, I had these two mini dishcloths, which I had worked up out of some yarn that was left over from making some um, dishcloths for my nephew. Interestingly, I made these dishcloths for my nephew. He is in college. He had moved into his first apartment and I was talking to him like, what can I do for you? Can I make you dishcloths? And he's like, sure, that'd be cool. So I did and I didn't just make him like standard like square dishcloths. I made him flip flops and I made him sunshines and I made him like interestingly shaped more effort than I ordinarily put into a dishcloth dishcloths, mailed them to his apartment and apparently he never got them. I saw him while I was visiting and I asked him about him because I thought it was kind of weird. I hadn't heard. Like, I didn't need a big thank you, but like a, hey, Auntie Kendra, I got the things you sent. Nothing. Found out they never showed up. So I don't know what happened to my dishcloths. I hope somebody is enjoying using the flip-flop dishcloths that I so lovingly made for not them. But this was the little bits of stuff that was left after I was done making him the dishcloths. So I just turned them into some mini dishcloths. We use mini dishcloths all the time. They are awesome. I like them because they're not wasteful. Like it's just a little bit. Like I use it when I wipe off the tops of my jars and I use them to do dishes and I use them to wipe up messes. And as soon as I feel like they're dirty, they just pop in the laundry. And this is very little laundry to add. Um, so I change out my towels more often. Whereas if it's a bigger dishcloth, it feels a little bit wasteful to me to wash them a lot when I've just cleaned like one little spill. But it might be that I clean one little spill and like I should wash the dishcloth. So mini dishcloths, they are popular around here and we have a lot of little hands helping. So that is, that was just ends, ends woven in and now it's done. And then this is another one of those patterns that I had made for somebody else. And it is the check me out scarf. And I really do like the pattern. I made it originally using Deborah Norville Everyday Soft Worsted in the color Parfait, but this obviously is not that. This is made out of Red Heart Super Saver in the color Camo and Erin, or sorry, Buff Fleck. And it is, this is an abbreviated version of the pattern. It's a little shorter and it fits a kid really nicely. And I tried it on my kids and I'll actually fit a wrap around them. This is ultimately going to be for sale this holiday season. I might make a hat to go with it because these are these are colors that I think would be pleasant for a bunch of the little people that live around me. So that is done and for that I needed to do the edging. That was all that was left and the way that this pattern has worked you actually you don't clip your edge or your you do cut off the yarn between the stripes so you don't carry it at the end but then your ends you just crochet over when you do the edging. So I had lots of ends. They didn't need to be woven, they just needed to be crocheted in. So I did that. And now this is off of my to-do list. All swept up. Okay, I don't know why I'm so itchy all of a sudden. I like must have touched something, I don't know. Anyways, the next thing that is off my hook was something that I showed you last week. I had the Labor Day craft show in Palmer and I started a shawl, I thought, out of Burnett Pop in the color Ebony and Ivory, I believe. Well, I decided that, that was going to be like a half, like a poncho, and then I was using the lipstick on my collar to do the other half. So I did ultimately fully make both halves of this poncho that I had envisioned in my mind. And I didn't like the way that my proportions sat with the like design I'd come up with. But I really liked part of the neckline and I liked the colors and I liked, I liked the feeling of working up the pattern, if that makes any sense. Like the, the rhythm of it was very pleasant to my mind. So I wanted to keep it. So what I ended up doing was even though I made both sides of the ponchos, so both skeins completely used up, I frogged the lipstick on my collar as I was crocheting it in 
on the end of the ebony and ivory. So instead of having two pieces, I ended up with one long piece that was kind of this funky shape shawl. Now I didn't like it as like a standard shawl and I didn't think I would. What I did like it as was this here, which I told Steve is a very funny, he, he, he laughs sometimes with my laundry because some of my clothes he can't figure out how to fold and this is most definitely one of them because I can't figure out how to either. And it was quite the labor of love to stitch it up in the right way, but I think if I do it again it'll be like in the future make another one, which I think I will, it will work out well. So let me take off this shawl. By the way, today I'm wearing my shawl that I uh, made for the fair this year. You will see it in more detail this weekend, weekend for us, midweek. I am filming a video of all of my summer makes that are completed, so all of my garments that I've made, because I know you haven't been able to see them very well, so Steve is gonna help me film a video in natural light of the garments with a bit of chat about them all so that you can see them all. That should, I believe, be coming out on Saturday. If not this Saturday, the following Saturday. But before we start fall, we'll finish out the summer. Anyways, taking off the shawl and replacing it with this. So there is a hole here for your arm. And then this part goes over your head like a poncho. And like I said, it was worked as one long piece, and then it seamed right here. See, because you can see the other pieces here. But I wrapped it around, and it seamed, and then I kind of sewed the neck the way that I liked it. And so here is what you get. And it gives me that feeling of wearing a shawl, like being wrapped up in the multiple layers and having it like wrapped up around your neck, but it's not going anywhere. Like I don't need a shawl pin because it's all hooked together and having my arm through this slit like it stays in place. I did a bunch of stuff in the kitchen with it the night I finished it and it it stays. But it's cozy because this is like I said two skeins of the Bernat Pop. I like the uh I like the patterning that ended up with it. I like how it it kind of has that like artsy drape that I like when I end up putting on my shawls but it is going to stay this way because don't you hate it when you're in the mirror and you're like fussing with something and then immediately you walk out and drop something reach over and pick it up and there went all your hard work because it all just blah everywhere so that is that is my my new poncho and I poncho pon poncho apparently i like to take the words of the uh the types of things and squish them together you know like schlanket it's like a poncho so that is how this all turned out and i'm very happy with it but it is a little too warm in this room to be wearing this right now oh so in addition to being seamed up the front there's also um i sewed a couple of key points around the neckline that keep it kind of bunched together. I also have tried this on with some of my um, black cowls and things that I have made and that I like to wear during the winter and boop, they they work out really nice with it. So I think that as I get toward the time of year where I'm trying to like lightly layer more and more clothing on, I think that that'll work out really nicely. Moving on to the next thing that I finished, which I actually finished before that, but, um, you know, it's neither here nor there. We are discussing what my children were going to be for Halloween, and we have a store-bought Winnie the Pooh costume that we got from a friend that my five-year-old wore last year. So this year, my three-year-old is going to wear it, but my five-year-old decided that he wanted to be an owl because we had this owl mask. It is now morphed into he wants to be owl from Winnie the Pooh and my daughter is going to be Tigger and she is crocheting herself. She already crocheted herself some Tigger ears and she's crocheting her own Tigger tail. So I don't have to worry about her costume because she's eight but the five-year-old I'm still making. So this is his owl costume. It is a poncho. He loves it lots. I've gotten lots and lots of hugs for this, so clearly it has been worth the effort. It is made out of this yarn, which I had been yarn ferried from one of Steve's coworkers. It's Natura brand Burley. It has price tags on it from Kmart, and originally it was something 99, but it eventually was on sale for 50 cents. And this is in the color Honey Beige. 
It's a 100% deluxe acrylic, 50 grams, approximately 76 yards, moth proof and non-allergenic. So it, it was super nice to work with. I actually am a little sad I don't have more of this. But I used a whole skein and then just a little bit more of the Natura. And then the back is Red Heart Super Saver in the color Cafe Latte. So I just made up this pattern. Oh, I am showing it to you inside out. That is the funny thing. So the pattern that I used for the front, you have um, kind of two, it's, it's reversible, but the sides look different. So this is what the inside of it looks like. So he could totally just like wear this, like, I don't know, to keep warm. And as you can see, that also means he has been wearing it around the house a lot in the last two days. So that's why it's inside out. Okay, here we go. This is what it's supposed to look like, minus the dog fur. Like I said, he's been loving it and the dog has been loving on him. So there's this, which has these, um, which has this kind of stitch to it. And then I, uh, so I made the front section and I made this back section, which is just kind of a textured double crochet. And then I turned it all upside down and I did this edging, which I thought looked like owl feathers. And then I just did some, went around and grabbed the whole neckline and then just did some decreasing till I got a nice decrease. So I am super happy with how the owl poncho turned out. It is the right size for him. It is useful as well as cute. And so I think we will get lots of use out of it. And here we are in the darkness of the bottom of my ironing board to see my completed ironing board socks. So this ironing board was my grandmother's. So it is older than me and it has very brittle little rubber feet on it, which were giving me some issues when like I dragged this around on the floor. So I just took some cotton in billowing blues and made little sockies that are over the rubber feet that kept falling off. And that is my uh, ironing board socks. And now I am working on making up a hat pattern to go with it to make him an owl hat. This is gonna be like the back and then I'm gonna use some more of this for like the face and then when I sew it all together, it'll end up with the like little little ears on the sides. And we've yet to determine whether there's gonna be eyes and things on this or if it's just gonna be like the head colors and he still wants to wear the mask. I am not sure. But there is plenty of time. I have never been this prepared. The last of my strung out projects is my yarn tail shawl. If you'd like to learn more about that, there will be a link on the end screen to the yarn tails video. But here it is, chapter six of my yarn tail shawl. Right here is the chapter about the rest of us just live here by Patrick Ness in Red Heart Super Saver in the colorway pool. And that is what this shawl is looking like right now. If you'd like to know more about it, you can go ahead and watch the yarn tails video so I don't spoil it all for you. And that is everything that has been on and off my hook this week. Honestly, a lot of my creative energies this week, creative, like a lot of my energy has not been going towards crocheting. I mean, the owl poncho took a lot. And then the night I spent with this poncho doing the final parts where I was trying to futz and make it into what I could see in my head and wanted to have on my person, um, took a lot of energy. But mostly I've been doing other things around the house, so there just wasn't a lot of time. I'm hoping that maybe there will be a bit more time this week. I'm going to do a V or go to a VKN on Friday. So I should hopefully get some more work done on the Schwanket. And we'll see what else comes up in the coming week. That is where I'm at. I have almost caught up on things that I need to finish before I'm done with the Freaker Frog projects that need love. I just need these two, which happen to both be yellow. And then these hat and uh, cowl that needs buttons on it. I was all ready to do it when I was in my like, let's just put buttons and weave ends in. Could not for the life of me find these buttons till I'd given up, put everything away, was on to something else, and I go digging through a bucket and there's my buttons. So that will happen hopefully this week. Just trying to, trying to sweep up, take a sweeping look at all of my projects and just clean things up a bit. I hope that you all have had a good week and maybe that you can do a little cleaning up of the things that are weighing on your mind as well because it's just, it's, it's not pleasant and it becomes a bit overwhelming. 
Like I said on the end screen here, there is a link to the Yarn Tales video from this week, as well as a link to my Etsy shop. There will be an update in the Etsy shop on Friday, because like I said, I've been busy, especially with canning, and sewing has been back burnered because the canner's on the front one. So there will be an Etsy shop update on Friday on the screen, Yarn Tales video, Etsy shop update. If you'd like, there are some beautiful fall and other assorted bags, all at very reasonable prices, I think. I will see you all next week. Bye!